Hello, this is Randy and welcome back. This is the third video in uh, our, our uh, installing OpenVPN. First video, we did a lot of uh, pre-installation work and some preconditions. Second video, we went through and, and did the server install itself. And now in this video, what we're gonna do is we're going to pick up right here, I believe, where we're gonna create certificates for those two users we created and take a look at at generating install packages, client install packages for them, and uh, get a client installed, and then we'll move into to testing. So I'm back on my on my server here, my server dashboard, and I go down to VPN and, and open VPN, and we we showed you how to check and see if your server is running. I actually I think there's a widget here too that you can add that shows the services. I don't want to spend too much time here, but yeah, yeah, there it is. I, I like this one. I usually have it on the dashboard just to uh, show me what's going on. Okay. All right. So back to VPN and open VPN, because we installed that package over here, package manager, and uh, we installed uh, the open, open VPN client export utility. Because we installed that, when we come here to OpenVPN, we have this option here, okay? Now what I wanna do before we, we do this is that, cause if I look here, it, yeah, okay. Okay, what I wanna do is I want to go in and go ahead, go ahead and, and create the uh, certificates for those users. Okay, now that's not done here, client export. Okay, all right, I was just thinking as I was talking there. So I want to go ahead and, and go to my user manager and I've got two users who I'm intending to be able to use VPN and I wanna get certificates assigned to them. Okay, so here's my, my bogus Bob user, not a member of admins and I ask you to do the same to make one that's not a member of admins. Now here's where we have something that, that we didn't have before. And that's that we have the ability to add a user certificate. And so I go to add, create a, an internal certificate. Okay, so my choices, and I'm, I'm happy with that. The certificate authority is gonna be OpenVPN, which is what I want. I want it to match the, the server certificate, which was also generated by OpenVPN. Okay, common name here, you can fill that in. See, a lot of this gets pre-filled for you. Okay, optional there, all right. There's one checkbox I'm looking for here and it has to do with allowing the clients to communicate with each other. Oh, it's not here, it's in the export wizard. Okay, so this is just creating a certificate for, for my user, Bob, all right. We'll, we'll do another one in case, uh, okay, in case that didn't show up there. So there's there's that certificate and we'll save that. And now we'll go to this other user account and let's take a look. This user is a member of admins. This user also has SSH privileges where my user Bob doesn't. And I go to certificates again and create a certificate, descriptive name, certificate authority. Okay. All right, not terribly difficult. From here forward, when you create users, I mentioned this in the first video that you can either like um, create your users and their certificates after you install OpenVPN or before, and we chose to do it before. But uh, if you create users now, then as part of creating them, you'll have the option then to also create a user certificate for them. So now we've done that and we needed to do that. And we come back here to VPN and to open VPN and we go to client export. Okay. So this is what, what changed because we created certificates for those two users. Okay, so what do we got here? Well, if we had five users, we'd have five blocks, you know, and so on. But what we've got here is we've got the username and the user was assigned a certificate. And then we've got a, a, um, a wizard here that will create the installation package for that user. 
Okay. Now, in, in both of my cases, uh, I'm going to be going for, for Windows 10. And that one is, uh, where am I missing it here? Got legacy. Oh, here we go. I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read them here. So we have current Windows installer. Hope you can see that there. Uh, current Windows installer, legacy Windows installer. And uh, for Mac, Mac OS and Windows, but using a, you, this, you, you bundle this with a tool called Viscosity, if I'm saying that right. And this is what I do. Uh, I have a department MacBook in, and so I, I, uh, I have uh, the Viscosity, if I'm saying that right, utility, and then the package that was came with it. So you do this for each user. So what are we saying? That each user gets a custom package. Okay, so in other words, when I generate this package, let me go ahead and do it here, current Windows installer 64-bit. When I generate this package, it's only for Bob. It has a cert it's it's looking for Bob's certificate. It ha actually it has Bob's certificate, and, and and the username and password and Bob's certificate, all three will be required. Okay. Now notice that that uh, I'm I'm using Microsoft Edge here, and it flagged a warning for me. It said that the 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 download was blocked, and so I have to choose to go ahead and keep the file, and it tells me. Are you really sure you want to do that? It's an executable and it doesn't recognize it. And I say, yes, yes, I do want to keep it. And so now it's in my downloads folder. I'm going to go back and do the same thing for my RK Graves account. And I come in here, current windows. I'm intending to install this on a 64 bit windows. Same warning from, from here, from uh, edge, keep it. Am I really sure that I want to keep it? Yes, keep it. Okay. All right, so now that we've done that, did it get it? There we go. Okay, it got it. Now that we've uh, we've done that, we are in, in the virtual world. All right. So let's go back here. Let's go back. Okay, let's get our, get kind of getting my bearings here. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is uh, this is what I've got. So I've installed the server, we verified it's running, and we've now generated client install packages so that the clients can actually now attempt to connect to the server. But here's the deal. Those are in the virtual world, right? They're in my downloads folder. What we have the option of doing on, um, in VMware is I've got a memory stick here in my hand and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to the machine that I'm using to remote, you know, to, so in other words, I, I've, I've, I've got a web console open into my ESXi server and I've, I've got then a, a VMware console to this Windows 10 install. Let me just kind of clean this up a little bit. In other words, you got to figure how to get it out of out of Windows 10. Now you could email it to yourself. You could create a shared folder. You could you know install Dropbox or Google Drive or use your Microsoft OneDrive. I just want to show you just a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do here is I plugged in that memory stick, and I go here. I go to remove. So I'm on the VM VMRC removable removable devices, and I say that I want to. Uh, connect to that memory stick and disconnect it from my host computer. Now this will work from from home, you know, remote in. It'll work from anywhere if you're using the VRMC. And so that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say disconnect it from my host computer, and now connect it into my virtual world. Let's see if it showed up. And so there it is as drive E. That's that memory stick. So I go in the downloads folder and I, I grab the two of these. So one of them, the way that you tell them apart is, is that the name of the user is embedded in the download. Okay, so this one here would be for Bob and, and this one would be for, for RK Graves. And so I, I copy those, I move them over and now I paste them. There's something that, that uh, I'm just realizing that uh, I need to go back and show you before we wrap up this video. Let me do that. Let's go back into PFSense. When you go to make these client exports, okay, when you go to do it, 
This box here, I, I'm sorry, I went back past it too fast, and it's really important. I apologize for not catching this earlier. What this is, is it, it identifies how, okay, let's, let's step back for a minute. Okay, so what, what is this wizard? This is the wizard that creates the client install package that you send to the end user, okay? All right, and when you make that install package, this is kind of an important choice. Uh, I went past it not thinking, and now I'm back and I want to talk to you about it. So the choice that I that it defaulted to is the interface IP address. In other words, it's going to be looking at the IPv4 address. Uh, when it generates the, the client install package, it's going to use the IPv4 address of the WAN side of my PFSense install, my PF1. Okay. Now we also set up um, we set up DNS, uh, cloud DNS in Azure, and so we have name resolution for VPN dot uh, ak .com in my in my case, and and so you can you can do that or that this would be installation host name, you would do this one and then you would put in here you would put in VPN dot in my case ak dot .com. What you have to do is you have to think about where is the client in relationship to your server? Now, in, in most, most of the cases, well, actually, let me back up before I keep going with that. You have to think about where the client is in relationship to your server. Okay, and you, you have to think about if the, if the IP address, address is uh, assigned to the WAN interface of your PFSense box, are they static? Or are they dynamic? Like on my home network, your home network, most most likely they're they're dynamic. Okay. And so if we do this, if we say interface IP address, well that's not that's not gonna work. I mean, it'll work until our internet service provider gives us a new dynamic address, which who knows when that is, right? Right, okay. It, here in sight, we're static. So we you know that that's a luxury that most of the world doesn't have. Most of your customers, your home, small businesses, they're going to all be dynamic. Okay. So in a case where you're going to use dynamic, then you're going to likely use one of these others. And the one that I would suggest to you is this, where you say uh, connect by name. Now, are, are you still with me? Okay. To make this work, you, you also need to, on PFSense, you need to install a, a dynamic DNS client, which PFSense has has a great one. I don't know that it's installed by default. There it is, dynamic DNS. And I don't have anything configured here because I don't need to, this is static. But I can tell you everywhere else but here, everywhere else but, but site, I have a client here. At home, I have a dynamic DNS client that that, bec that looks at my IP address coming in from my internet service provider and updates it in in my um, I have cloud hosted DNS for home. I'm using uh, I'm using Cloudflare. Okay, I'm not sure how much how deep to go into this with you. If you have questions on this, uh, I we could you know I could do a video where I remote into my home and I show you the configuration. It's very similar. Do you know how we created certificates this way? How how we used uh, DNS validation to generate a certificate for PFSense. Doing dynamic uh, DNS is very, very much the same. You, I'll just use my example and I'll be brief here. In Cloudflare, which I like Cloudflare, I have a, a DNS domain for my home and for, I share it with family members. And so in Cloudflare, I have to go in and I have to give permission for Cloudflare to accept dynamic updates from clients and and I get like a secret code and a password. Okay, I bring that secret code and password here and then I go to create a client and the list here is really long. I'm not seeing the list here. You, you get to pick from a list here. Oh, it's right up here at the top. These are all of the different providers that PFSense has a pseudo wizard to help you with. In other words, whichever one you pick, it'll give you the right boxes for you to fill in the information. OK, 
okay? So you pick whoever you're using. Now, again, if you have static address, you don't need this. But if you have a dynamic address, which most of us do, then you pick a, a provider for cloud-hosted DNS. Uh, there's one here for Azure. There's one here for the, you know, for the Amazon Web Services DNS. There, there, there's a lot of them here, as you can see in the list. You pick that provider. You go and then set up on the provider side to say that you're going to allow dynamic DNS. You configure this client, okay? And then once you do that, I don't, I don't want to save it. Once you do that and you go back here to, to uh, your client configuration, what you're going to do then is you're going to use a DNS name instead of an IP address. So right here, what you're going to do is you're going to do something like this, and then you're going to type in, uh, did I go to the right place? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, I went to go to other. And then here you're going to type in something like, you know, like like what we did, vpn dot, in my case, ak.bobstaco.com. Now, the good news is, is that all of this is, uh, is selectable, uh, meaning that you can make a, a setting and then you can tr test and troubleshoot. And, and if it doesn't work out the way you like, you can come back in and change it. There's another setting in here that I missed that I didn't mean to. When you're generating the client utility, if 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 you're expecting that that the client that there'll be more than one client connected, here let me just highlight this for you. So this is one that you do have to pay attention to. Without this set, two clients may not run concurrently, so it's only one VPN user at a time. That's kind of a big deal. There's another setting, and I apologize that I I I didn't share that with with you. And you've seen this on Wi-Fi where the setting says, can, can, if, if Bob connects by VPN and Randy connects by VPN, can Randy talk to Bob? Okay, you see that on Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, two people connect to a Wi-Fi. Are you gonna allow those two people to communicate across your Wi-Fi or can they only communicate through your Wi-Fi? Uh, Open v, VPN has the same setting like that. And again, I apologize that I didn't catch and show that to you. All right. So what I've done now is I've I've uh, I've moved those uh, my install files out onto a memory stick. I can then disconnect the memory stick here from uh, from my virtual machine. Okay, disconnect uh, from my virtual machine and connect to the host. And then now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna we're gonna quit this video and I'm gonna ask you to quit your video. And what we want to do is we want to install the client and and see that it connects. And, uh, and then that's where I'll pick up with you next. In other words, I'll install the client and when you, when you click on it, it'll prompt for name and password and you get a little icon down here at the bottom and it'll go to green if, if the connection is successful. Yeah. And so I'll pick up from that point on. All right, thank you for, for bearing with me on, uh, on stumbling a little bit on this video, but I'll see you in the next video where we'll look at the client side of it and, and what, what that involves and, and what it looks like and how what are some troubleshooting tools you can do from the client side? Alrighty, I'll see you in the next video.